Welcome to Callous Coder. Today we will write an abstract strategy game in Rectum JS, uh, React JS for a desktop browser. <laughs> God, what did I get myself into? <laughs> there is no God. <laughs> Motherfucker! So I wanted to challenge myself. I avoid writing web apps ever since I wrote the first online bookstore here in 1996 with HTML1, CGI bin, and Perl. <laughs> make it go away, mommy, make it and go away. And then I did another project with Perl and CGI bin, and I thought, fuck the web, fuck browsers with all your different interpretations. But everything moves to the web, so I figured I have to get with the times. So let's learn Rectum.js and JavaScript and write this awesome strategic abstract strategy game called King's Valley. Or as I like to call it, Overo, come into my glory hole. I mean, the tiles getting into the center square with your pharaoh, that's, that's where everybody's mind goes, right? And if you don't know what a glory hole is, uh, a glory hole is... There's a hole in the wall where you put your cock and balls. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Starr from Steel Panther. You can always rely on those guys to give you a good explanation of these sexual things. So let's jump in the code and I will also show you my AI, which is the Mini Maxi. I have a Maxi and my friend has a Mini. Well, that is what our mutual girlfriends say. It's not that I ever seen his mini. He did see my maxi. Seen it? I felt it! I'll slap you with my hard cock. I will slap you with my hard cock. Okay, let's jump in. I don't have a dirty mind. So this is the game that we're going to create. King's Valley. It's actually written or designed by Mr. Mitsuo Yamamoto and I gave it a little artistic twist. I did not really like these very abstract pyramids and these discs. I figured since we need to get to the King's Valley, a pharaoh need to get to the center, so I created the Eye of Ra. And instead of discs, I created the scarabs and the pharaoh. Actually, I did not model these. I just got a model of line and I already had this STL that was a photo scanned for the real game that I made about three years ago. And the purpose of this game is that each piece can move orthogonally and diagonally, but with one caveat, they need to move all the way until they uh, hit another piece or the end of the board. And then the purpose is for the pharaoh to get to that center tile, or as I call it, into the glory hole. So let's first have a look at the graphics models. So in the directory models, we have the pharaoh.blend file, which has all the pieces. And basically I uh, put up everything together, didn't bother to create different scenes. I just wanted to render out some images that I could work with. I should have created scenes because I'm a visual effects artist as well. But uh, yeah, couldn't be bothered. So basically this is the black pharaoh. And if I wanted to make it gold, I go to the body. And I just brought up the lightness to the gold that I liked. And just rendered that out as well. So the beetle. Ooh. 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 That looks nasty. Sort of like a... Uh, Face hugger. Oh, you will eat the bugs. You will eat the fucking bugs. The great reset. Let's disable it. For some reason, my select hierarchy doesn't work anymore in this version. Because usually you could select hierarchy and then enable everything. But yeah. So the same way uh, here with the uh, with the scarabs. Uses the same one. If I wanted to make it black, I just brought down the gold to black and just render it out with F12 and then had a nice version. Ooh, tree hugger. I forgot to uh, disable the render here. <coughs> and I forgot to disable the render there, enable the renders there. That's those things. 
Yeah, so now we get a scarab. And then I also have a board. Let's disable everything. I need to find a uh, version where the select hierarchy works again. Because it was nice to just click on the top and do that. And then the board, that's the plane. That's the only thing that I created. And I need to turn off that area light that overexposes it. And this is what I modeled. I wanted to have this um, sort of hyper-realistic look. I don't like these very abstract graphics, to be honest. So that's why I wanted to have this hyper-realistic look. All the tiles here are just procedural, except for uh, the little Eye of uh, Horus, which is uh, just a black and white image that I use as a bomb map to give a, a little bit more detail. And all the images are rendered at 500 by 500. That is more than enough. So the code is strictly MVC, Model View Controller. So the app.js is the controller for the player. Uh, the model is just an array, an n by n array. And the view is the board.js. You just pass in the board with the current situation and it will render out that state. So in React, you have this construct of a use state where you can save the state in between. That's what we use a lot. Of course, we play some audio when we make a move, and when we win and when we lose. And I uh, use a timer effect to uh, remove what well, happens when you make a move. So the timer effect just deletes that. And everything is controlled with the drag start, drag drop, and the drag end. Because that's the only interaction that you really have. So the drag stop first says that we don't have a legal move. Because, well, players usually are cheaters. Especially when they're politicians. So I can do this, but I cannot do that. Or that. And then we uh, record the from position that we actually start dragging from. And then when we let go, we uh, parse the location from the from x and the to x. And then we check whether we make a legal move, because that's important. If it is a legal move, then we actually move the piece for the game. So inside of the board, and we play that sound and we check for a winner. If there is no winner, then we set the board as it is updated to the new board. I later found out this lovely thing because I made a deep copy with just your nested for each loops. Like, oh, there's actually a method for it. Cool. And then, of course, it's a legal move. And we set the cursor to wait because then it's the turn of black. We check for a winner. Uh, for every move that you make, you need to w check if there is a winner. Again, that is in the game logic. So the game logic is detached completely from uh, the actual interaction piece. You don't want any game logic in your app.js. I see that a lot in these tutorials and it frustrates and aggravates the fuck out of me because that's not how you create a game. This only needs to handle the user input. So it's a controller and it calls a view. That is the real thing to do it properly. Uh, if there is no winner, because check winner will only return a zero, one or minus one. And it's really easy because we know when the winner is when a pharaoh gets to the center tile. So basically we just Divide the number of tiles by 2 for the x and the y. So if we add 2, 2 in this case, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And if there is a uh, white pharaoh, then white wins. If there is a black pharaoh, then black wins. And otherwise, negative 1, there is no winner. And black is 0 and 1. So if there is a winner, we set the color of the winner or the winner, and that will create a winner message like black wins. And we play uh, 
in that case if black wins the lose sound if white wins we play the win sound and we disable the board because we don't want to be able after uh, we want to move uh, pieces about right so in this case we set it to disable that way we cannot play anymore until we refresh it the highlight to from that is that uh, red little square that pops up when the AI moves so you know where it came from and where it went yeah I added that later on because when I'm at level 5 sometimes it churns through so many moves that we have that little annoying pop-up of a browser your page is not responding and you can click wait or just ignore because eventually it will get there but when it uh, when that model moves away and your piece already moved you don't really know what piece moved that's called uh, well, a blindness uh, situational blindness I believe it was my minor in psychology <laughs> so you don't see it so that's why I created that uh, later on and yeah the drag end is basically when you let go then we check uh, for a winner or first if it's a legal move if not then we revert it if it's a winner we do that win function and otherwise it's black's move and uh, so when it's black moves then it will call the AI and it will create a move so it will move its piece there it will show that highlight it will set the board so we actually render it to the screen and we can see whether uh, it's a winner or not if it is then uh, we do the <laughs> if black wins and otherwise we play uh, the click sound the move sound and we turn back the cursor to normal because when it actually starts uh, the move of black we actually set the cursor where is it cursor to wait here as soon as my move is done the white move is done we set it to wait because the AI can take a bit of time we have actually two uh, games basically or two uh, ways that we can play the game and that is set by uh, these little icons this is the normal game this basically is the restart and this is the easy game for kids where the uh, enemy pharaoh is between the uh, uh, other pieces and this is a little easier of a game it's all in the rules and explanation so that's what the restart does it will actually if we click those icons below then we call the start pharaoh local side or the enemy side which then in turn calls this uh, method with the right argument a uh, player color which basically translates the player color into a text white and black because uh, white is zero and black is one or vice versa i can't remember change the level up and down that is uh, this button and we get to the ai in a moment uh, two is really simple basically it's just almost random three that is for uh, toddlers four is an average gamer and five is for somebody that actually played this regularly and i had to make the ai cheat a little because otherwise i could never win and if i can win and i've been playing this game for three years then uh, you're pretty much screwed right until i actually found probably a solution that will always allow you to win but i need to uh, investigate if that is true by actually looking at the uh, minimax algorithm which we're going to do now so the ai is basically here we do all the checks of all the different moves i create a big array of eight positions because we have uh, a maximum of eight directions that a piece can move what the end position is that's the fastest way to create a nice little uh, clean list of possible moves and with chess you can imagine this is already a lot longer because you can also stop here instead of just there or is here here and here instead of just here if you play the pharaoh so yeah chess has a lot more moves and the minimax is not really an algorithm in chess that uh, gives you a good ai because it would churn far far too long that's what they found out really early and that's why they have a lot of opening books or libraries as they call them and look for moves there but we use the minimax and minimax is basically a brute force algorithm that churns through every possible move that i can make that then 
the opposition can make and then I make again and then opposition makes and every one of those is called a level. Hence, games are called, uh, the difficulty is called levels because if we just have level one, it's basically uh, just a random move. Level two is uh, uh, he plays a move and checks that I can maybe play a move and then what move he can play. So I hope that is uh, makes sense. That is very confusing. But yeah, you can imagine that this will fan out really, really quickly and gets very, very big quickly. And usually you can do alpha beta pruning that if you can make such a bad move that a player is probably not going to move, you do not have to churn through those branches again. The problem is that I don't know how to score intermediate moves. In uh, chess, when you make a move, you can score a move based on uh, how many pieces it will take, for example. Or uh, if you have a check, for example. In this case, the only thing that I can think of is just like tic-tac-toe. You either win or lose or keep on playing. But I didn't really take a lot of time to actually investigate that. I just built this in uh, two evenings, basically. Just wanted to get the game mechanics working. But even on level five, I lost really frustratingly a lot. So that's when I decided to dumb down the algorithm to bring its IQ points down to my IQ points, which is about 80 when I'm sober and 60 when I had a drink. And basically what I do is I create a random score because minus one is the score that we get back. Uh, either you win or lose or minus one. The game is uh, not ended yet, so everybody's playing. And I just increment randomly my score. So this way, uh, a bad move could possibly look like a good move and that way uh, it will allow it and then maybe it will return his move so basically this is this random statement with the multiplication is the dumbing down of the algorithm and that is the easiest way to dumb down a uh, mini max to make it uh, more human player friendly so if you have a game that you can churn through all the combinations and you want to make it still winnable just uh, cheat a little the minimizing moves that sometimes a, a very good move may look very bad or a very bad moved move may look very good yeah and then here that's that copy because in this ai i need a copy of the board because we're going to actually play a game so i don't want the original board and then i did not learn yet that you can do this in javascript which is really cool i just did it the way that i've done it for 40 years to copy an array with nested loops in this case and this one is a, a weird one the shortcut winner i ran into this weird situation that the minimax would actually see that every location it would win but it would not make the winning move it would just torture me it would keep dragging me around and I go like oh he can win he can win oh he doesn't take that move oh oh I still have a chance he doesn't take that move well now it does take that move immediately and uh, basically takes me out of my suffering I mean if you're going to kill me just fucking shoot me and stop torturing me right so that's why I uh, created that for some reason it would just taunt you it was really funny initially but then it became really frustrating yeah and these uh, creates all these uh, legal moves and basically they're just uh, this is the public function this is the private function that will return uh, all the moves of a player and these actually determine those moves and that is the board and then i prune my own location because your own location if you just uh, do this it will see that as a legal move i don't want that so clear that out and the beetle is not allowed in the center that's one of these game things if i could move here for example if that pharaoh isn't there 
logically I would be allowed to move there but the game rules state that the beetle is never allowed on the center square only the pharaoh so I just uh, prune that out and this is a method that you see a lot in these sorts of games that we first check all the possible moves that then we can make and then clean out those exceptions because that is usually easier than in your algorithm already calculate uh, those exceptions so just calculate everything and then prune it so uh, yeah that is basically the logic it's 300 lines of code could probably or 400 lines of code you could probably uh, reduce it even a bit if you use uh, a bit more native uh, javascript functions but yeah that is it and the ai on level five sometimes it runs a bit long and you get this annoying pop-up like your web page isn't responding well it is so just ignore it or click on wait but that's why i created those highlights uh, because sometimes i just didn't see them and as you can see we're churning through every possible combination so yeah on level five it's a bit tediously slow so maybe at some point i want to create a rest api write it in rust and make it multi-threaded so basically for every piece i create a thread so basically run five threads in parallel that will actually ch check all the moves that will make it uh, five times faster on a multi cpu or multi-threaded cpu well yeah this is uh, it's a fun game we've been playing it now for three years my dad and i and i think and he also came to me like i think that if you move your pharaoh initially there we go just ignore and it will make the move if you initially move your pharaoh here that you probably always win as long as you don't make mistakes and since he had the same feeling and since i had the same feeling it's something that i want to investigate so there you have it the abstract strategy game king's valley or as i like to call it Oh, Pharaoh, come into my glory hole. Yeah, I do think that I need to tweak the game a little. I first want to change the Pharaoh into a penis, a colon penis and a black penis. And a black penis is going to be very, very big, of course. And change the scarabs into uh, cocks. Not as in little penises, but a cock. Like, as in cock block and have that center tile mimic a glory hall because I do think that is a far better theme than a pharaoh getting into a center tile that is too abstract but I had a lot of fun actually learning Rectum JS, uh, React JS. I really like JavaScript it's amazing that they have so many different methods that do little things that you don't need to code unlike you were developing a C++ or C, which is still my habit just to code things out, but they have methods pretty much for everything. And I still don't like browsers, because even though I managed to scale my browser on the desktop and it pretty much works on every browser and platform, as soon as you run it on a mobile phone, it somehow doesn't fit. And who thought that if you long press on an image, on a mobile phone to actually drag it that the whole screen would jump up and down as if you had a Pfizer jab and getting an aneurysm or something like why isn't that the same who, who thought of that it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me but I do think that I will continue creating some web apps and some web games the next one will be Quattro and I'm thinking about having a micro penis a large penis, a black penis, a white penis, and uh, circumcised penises and non-circumcised penises. What is my fascination with penises? I mean, almost get the wrong vibe for me, right? Well, I hope you learned something and see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, I got the Max and you got the Mini.